Hey, everybody, and welcome to this deep dive. Um, today, we're going to be talking about tax lien investing. Okay. Which is really exciting. You know, it's this world where people can get properties for really cheap because of unpaid taxes. Yeah. It's kind of like a treasure hunt, right? But instead of digging for gold, you're like sifting through, you know, delinquent property taxes. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to be diving deep into you know, both sides of it, okay. the rewards and also, you know, the important things to think about before you jump in. Yeah. And to help us make sense of all of it, we have joining us today a true expert in real estate and tax liens. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, I know a lot of people um, get confused by the difference between tax liens and tax deeds. Right. Could you kind of explain the difference between those two? Sure. Yeah. A tax lien is basically like a loan to the person who didn't pay their taxes. It's backed by their property. Okay. So when you buy a lien in an auction, you're basically paying their back taxes and then you get the right to collect that money back. Got it. With interest. So it's like you're stepping in like the bank almost, but with much better interest rates. Right. I've heard these can go as high as like 18 to 36 percent. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So tell me about tax deeds now. Okay. Those are different, right? They are, yeah. Tax deeds exist in states that don't use the lien-in system. Okay. So instead of buying the right to collect the debt, you're actually bidding on the property itself. So you could walk away from the auction owning like a house or a piece of land? Yes, exactly. Wow, that's wild. I bet there's some crazy stories out there. Oh, definitely. One investor, Dustin Hahn, bought a funeral home and a limousine business oh, for just over $6,100. Wow. At a tax deed sale. Oh, my God. And now that property brings in $1,000 in monthly rent. A funeral home and a limbo business. Okay. So those returns sound pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling there's more to the story. Mm -hmm. What are some of the risks with tax and investing? Like, what should people be aware of? Yeah. It's not all sunshine and roses as with any investment. There are some risks involved. One of the biggest risks is that you really need to do your research. Okay. You need to do your due diligence. Like investigate. Yes. You need to understand the local market, assess the property's condition, and check for any hidden problems. Hidden problems like what? Give me the scary details. Well, things like code violations, um, outstanding HOA liens. Oh, yeah. Even environmental issues. Yikes. These can really turn that dream investment into a financial nightmare. Okay, so it's not as simple as just showing up with your checkbook ready. Yeah. What other challenges should new investors be aware of? Well, competition can be a big one. You're often bidding against other investors, seasoned investors, and even big institutions like banks. Oh, wow. So you got to be ready to play hardball. Yeah. And speaking of playing hardball, you should check out BrianGarvin.com. Okay. That's Brian with an IRF. He's got a free affiliate guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's over 12,300 words of great information. You just have to put in your name and email address and click the link that they send you. So where can people find that link? It's in Brian's YouTube bio. Okay, awesome. So we were talking about tax lien investing and yeah. you know, some of the things that new investors need to be aware of. Right. What other tips do you have? I always tell people to go to a few tax lien auctions just to watch. Oh, like as an observer? Yeah, just as an observer. This will give you a chance to see how it works in real life. Okay. Get a feel for the competition and understand the little details of bidding. So it's like watching a few rounds of poker before you put your own chips on the table. Exactly, yeah. It's about minimizing your risk by understanding how it all works. Okay. Another tip is to understand the rules and regulations for each county where you want to invest. Oh, right, because each state has its own laws, and then counties can have their own little quirks too, right? Exactly. The process, the redemption periods, the foreclosure procedures, they can all be different. So you really got to do your homework. Yeah, it's like learning a new language. Okay, so we've talked about researching the property, understanding the competition, and knowing the local rules. Yeah. Anything else beginners should keep in mind? One of the most important things to remember is that tax lien investing is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Okay. It takes knowledge, effort, and patience. There are a lot of resources available, like classes and books from experienced investors yeah. that can really help you learn faster. Yeah, we talked about Dustin Hahn earlier, who offers a free book called The ABCs of Tax Lean and Deed Investing. That seems like a great place to start. Definitely. Seek out those resources, learn from the pros, and be ready to put in the time to really understand it. Okay, so far we've learned about the potential for really great returns with tax lien investing. Right. But also how important it is to do your research, understand the risks, and be prepared to put in some work. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not a passive investment. Yeah. 
but it seems like a great option for those who are willing to put in the effort. So as we wrap up this part of our conversation, I want to encourage you to think about what's really resonating with you. What parts of Taxly Investing are you most curious about? Right. What questions are coming up for you? Hold on to those thoughts because we'll be continuing this deep dive in part two. Yes, we'll be back. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, to get your free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's over 12,300 words of incredible information, and you can find the link in Brian's YouTube bio. We'll be right back with more about tax lien investing. Welcome back to our deep dive on tax lien investing. All right, so we talked about due diligence being super important. Yes. But what does that actually look like? You know, in practice, it's kind of like buying a used car, right? Yeah. You don't just hand over the cash without checking under the hood. Exactly. You want to know what you're getting into. Yeah. And with tax lien investing, that means researching the property itself, the neighborhood, and the local market. Right. We talked about those potential red flags like code violations and HOA liens and even like environmental issues. Yeah. Those are the things that can really turn a good investment into a bad one. For sure. Yeah. So when we talk about due diligence, like what's the first step? Where do we start? Well, first, you need to gather as much info as you can about the property. Okay. Um, start with the basics, like the address, the parcel number, and the legal description. Okay, so we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Yeah. You want to look for things like the assessed value, the tax history, and if there are any outstanding liens or judgments. Okay, so those liens and judgments can really complicate things. Definitely. You'll also want to check the zoning, the current use, and any potential for development. So it's not just about what the property is now, but also what it could be in the future. Exactly. It's all about assessing the present and the future potential. Got it. So we've got the property details down. What's next? Once you have a good understanding of the property itself, you got to zoom out and look at the neighborhood. Right? Because a great house in a bad neighborhood isn't a good investment. Yeah, it's like buying a fancy car without checking the tires. Oh, I like that. The neighborhood is like the tires. It's essential. Okay, so what do we need to know about the neighborhood? Well, you want to research things like property values in the area, crime rates, school districts, and any new developments that could change the neighborhood. So we're gathering all these clues to see if they paint a good picture of the investment. Exactly. And as you're doing that, keep your investment goals in mind. Oh, okay. Are you looking for a quick profit or a longer-term investment? Right, because a short-term investor might be fine with a fixer-upper. Exactly. But someone looking for passive income would probably want a property that's already in good shape. Right. Your due diligence process should match your strategy. Speaking of strategies, have you checked out BrianGarvin.com yet? Yes. Brian with an I has a free guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Oh, yeah. It's over 12,300 words of amazing advice. Wow. And you can find the link in his YouTube bio. Nice. Okay, so back to our deep dive. We've talked about the property and the neighborhood. What other factors should we consider during due diligence? Well, we mentioned this before, but I think it's worth repeating. Understanding the local tax laws and regulations. Yes, that's so important. Each state has its own rules about tax lien sales. So what works in one state might not work in another. Right, and it goes even deeper than that. Counties within a state can have their own procedures. So you really need to become an expert in the specific county where you're investing. Exactly. Don't try to be a jack-of-all-trades master one county at a time. Got it. Take the time to research the rules and regulations for that county. How are the auctions run? What are the deadlines? How do you pay? Wow. It sounds like a lot to keep track of. It can be, but it's worth it. The more you know, the smoother it will be. Okay, so we've got research on the property, the neighborhood, and the local tax laws. Anything else? One final thing, and this is really important. You need to understand the competition. Right, because we're not the only ones looking for good deals. Exactly. You're competing with other investors and even institutions like banks. So how do we size up the competition? The best way is to attend a few auctions just to observe. You can see who the regulars are, how they bid, and what properties they go for. It's like scouting out the other team before a big game. Exactly. Yeah. You can learn a lot just by watching. That can help you figure out how much you're willing to bid. Right. It's all about gathering information and using it to your advantage. Speaking of gathering information, make sure to visit BrianGarvin.com. Okay. That's Brian with an I. He's got a free guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate yeah. that can help you really boost your income. And the link for that is in his YouTube bio. That's right. Okay. So now that we've talked about due diligence, let's move on to the auction itself. 
Mm. What can investors expect when they go to an auction? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. It seems like it could be pretty intense. It can be exciting, for sure. Remember, the goal of the auction is for the government to get those unpaid taxes back. Okay. So they want to sell those liches and get that money. It's like a yard sale for delinquent taxpayers. Yeah, kind of. But instead of old furniture, we're talking about claims on real estate. Okay, so I know the auction process can be different in different places, but are there some common elements? Yeah, definitely. Typically, the auction will start with the auctioneer announcing the first property. Okay. They'll say the address, the parcel number, and the amount of taxes owed. So you know right away what you're dealing with. Right. And then the bidding starts. Now, this is where it gets interesting. In most tax land auctions, the bidding goes down, not up. Wait, what? That's the opposite of a normal auction. I know, right? But the reason is they want to encourage people to pay those taxes. So the starting bid is usually the full amount of the taxes, plus any penalties and interest. Okay. And then bidders compete by offering to accept a lower interest rate. So the lowest interest rate wins. Exactly. So let's say the starting interest rate is 18%. One bidder might say they'll accept 16%. Another might say 14% and so on. Like a reverse auction. Yeah, exactly. And this keeps going until someone has the lowest interest rate. That person wins the lien. Okay. So what happens if no one bids on a property? Sometimes the county might lower the interest rate and try again later. But if no one bids, they might just keep the lien themselves. So the county becomes the landlord. Yeah, kind of. They might try to sell it later. But for now, let's focus on the liens that do get sold. Okay. So once someone wins a lien, what happens next? Do they get the keys to the property? Right. Not quite. They become the official lien holder. They've basically paid the taxes for the owner. And now a clock starts ticking. It's called the redemption period. That's the time the owner has to pay back the taxes and get their property back. Exactly. And if they do that, the lien holder gets their money back plus the interest. It's a win-win. Either they earned interest or they might get the property. Okay, so let's say the owner does decide to pay back the taxes. How does that work? They pay the money to the county, okay, and then the county gives the money to the lien holder. So the lien holder is kind of like a middleman. Yeah, in a way. They've helped the owner keep their property. You know, it's easy to just think about the money, but it's good to remember that this can actually help people. Definitely. It can be a huge relief for the owner to get their property back. It's like a second chance. Right. But of course, sometimes the owner doesn't pay the taxes. What happens then? Well, then the lien holder could end up Owning the property right. Yeah, that's when things can get interesting. Remember, in a tax on state, you don't automatically own the property. You're just buying the right to collect the debt. So even if the owner doesn't pay, you still have to go through a legal process to get the property. Right. It's called foreclosure. Foreclosure. Okay. It can be a long process, and it's different in every state. Basically, you have to go to court and prove that you have the right to take ownership of the property. So it's probably a good idea to hire a lawyer. Yeah, definitely someone who knows about tax land and foreclosures. Okay, so let's say you go through that whole process and you win. Do you get the keys then? If there are no other lien tens on the property, then yes, you become the new owner. Wow. You've basically traded your lien for the deed to the property. That's amazing. But I guess there's still no guarantee that it'll be a good investment. Right, the property might need a lot of work or the market might have changed. That's why doing your research beforehand is so important. Totally. So once you have the property, what can you do with it? Well, you have a few options. You can sell it, rent it out, or even live in it yourself. So many possibilities. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Make sure to visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, has over 12,300 words of valuable information. You can find a link in his YouTube bio. We'll be right back with the final part of our deep dive into tax lien investing. All right, so welcome back to our final part of this deep dive into tax lien investing. Yeah. We've really gone through a lot, right? Yeah. From like the basics of tax liens and tax deeds hmm. to, you know, doing your research, going through that option process. Yes. Redemption, foreclosure. It's been a journey. It has. It's uh -huh. not a passive strategy, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> but like you were saying, for people who were willing to put in the work. Yes. There's some serious potential there. Absolutely. I'm sure people are listening and thinking, okay, this sounds great. Yeah. But I still have some questions. So let's open it up now for some questions. Yeah. What are people wondering about tax line investing? What's been on your mind throughout this conversation? Like maybe you're wondering how to even find those auctions. Yeah. Or um, maybe you're curious about those redemption periods and foreclosures in your state. Exactly. So we're here to answer those questions yeah. and make things a little bit clearer. Right. Now, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by all this info, that's totally normal. Yeah. 
it's a lot to take in. It's a process. Yes. You don't have to become an expert overnight. Exactly. And, you know, we talked about those resources. Like, Ted Thomas has those educational classes. Yes, he does. And Dustin Hahn has his book. Mm -hmm. Those are really great places to start. Yeah. And don't forget about connecting with other investors. You yeah. know, going to meetups or joining online groups right. can be so helpful. It's like having your own team of experts in your corner. Exactly. Before we wrap up, have you checked out BrianGarvin.com yet? Oh, of course. Brian with an I. Hi. He's got that free guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Yes. Over 12,300 words of amazing advice. Wow. The link is in his YouTube bio. Awesome. So as we come to the end of our deep dive, I want to leave you with this thought. If you're really intrigued by tax land investing, go for it. Learn more. Yeah. But remember, approach it like a student. Yeah. Seek out good resources. Talk to experienced investors. Yeah. Put in the time and effort. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's constantly changing, so keep learning. Exactly. It's been great sharing all of this with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. And remember, tax land investing can be really rewarding. Yes, it can. Just be strategic. Do your research and never stop learning. Right. So that wraps up our deep dive into tax lane investing. We hope you enjoyed it and that you're excited to maybe explore this a little further. Yes, definitely. Thanks for tuning in and happy investing, everyone. Take care.